Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be talking about staying focused. I think this is something that everyone, even the most successful businesses, still struggle with. So I thought I would share the fail-safe system I've created to make sure that I stay productive with what I do. The first is probably what I think is the most crucial step in staying focused with your business, and that is creating a support circle of people who understand what you're doing and what you're going through. For me, this just means that I actually meet once a week with some friends who are sort of in the same boat that I am, and we have coffee. We talk, we sort of commiserate about tough points in our life or in our jobs, and we help hold each other accountable for the goals that we have. And it doesn't need to be a formal relationship, but just someone that you can sort of support and also be supported by, and that you can share ideas and hopes with, and they make sure that you stay on task. If you tell them something that you want to do, they're going to ask you about it, and that gentle reminder is something that will really help you move forward with your business. Also, I love to take advantage of free online software to keep yourself on schedule. I will do just about anything Google throws at me. I am a huge fan of Google Calendar Reminders. It's basically all I use for Design Sponge to stay on task. But you can also use some great sites like Backpack, Todoist, or Remember the Milk, which are free online systems where you can write in your to-do list, and it'll send you text reminders or email reminders, anything you want to keep your business and your regular daily tasks on time. Now, I find that one of the tough things with running your own business is you're often faced with really huge projects that you have to do. And sometimes they can seem so daunting you don't even want to start them. So for me, I find the best way to get through things like that is to break them into small, actionable items that you can actually do. For me, I like to do this by using a silly little widget I download onto my desktop called the Pomodoro Technique. You can find it online and it's just a little widget that goes onto your desktop and it looks like a little tomato kitchen timer and it keeps you working in 10 to 20 minute segments and then forces you to take a break. It actually will gray out your computer screen so you can't do anything. And I find that working in small concentrated chunks like that helps me get so much more work done and my brain actually gets a rest, a little tiny rest in between those sessions that keeps me focused and efficient. I also think it's really important, especially as so many of us are, are visual people, to keep visual reminders in your house or in your office that act as sort of an ever-present reminder of the things you need to get done. I actually work in a home office, which is also known as my living room, and uh, I keep a chalkboard in my living room where I write down the big projects that I need to get done. These are things that aren't going to happen necessarily on a daily basis or even on a weekly basis, but are things that I like to just have to look at every day to remind me oh yeah, I did want to work on this second idea, or I did want to bring on a new writer to talk about this topic. I think sometimes having visual reminders is just a really good way to sort of constantly poke yourself with a reminder that you need to get something done. Now, here are some of my favorite tips for bloggers and business owners for staying focused. The first is, I think it's incredibly easy to get overwhelmed with blog or internet research, no matter what you're using that for. So it's really important to use either an RSS or some sort of blog reader to make sure that your internet research is concise. doesn't matter what form you choose to get it in, whether it's a Feedblitz email you get every day or just a Google reader that you use. Make sure that you make that internet research as easy to, di to digest as possible. The second is, I really advise using a clearly defined daily schedule. For example, I do email every morning from 7 to 9 without fail, and I don't do anything else during those hours. I also do the same thing at the end of the day, whether it's two hours from 8 to 10 or from 10 to 2 in the morning, whatever time of day I am finally finishing my day, I end it by plowing through a few emails. For me, it really gives my day a sense of beginning and ending and helps me relax and have some sort of stability. And this will be one of the hard things when you leave a job to go full time is that there's no one to define a schedule for you anymore. And setting up these chunks of the day where you do the same thing will really help you ease into the rhythm of working on your own and help you ease into working every day. Now this third tip is probably the hardest for most people who run their own businesses, and I'll admit it's still the hardest thing for me to do, which is delegating. But if you can identify things that are easily repeated that don't need you to do them and give them to someone else to do, it's really going to help you free up brain space to work on the things that you need to work on. Because if you're trying to micromanage every aspect of your business, you're really just not using your brain power efficiently. And I still struggle with this, but it's really important to remember to delegate as much as possible. And the last is something I mentioned with the Pomodoro technique, but I think is important to bring up again. And that is taking small, medium, and large breaks every day. I think a lot of small business owners, and I know I do this sometimes, you'll start work in the morning and the next thing you know, you look up and it's dinner time and all you've done is sit in front of a laptop and work all day. And that is just killer on your brain. You've got to give yourself a break, whether it's you get up and you do some stretches, 
you walk around the block, you take the dog for a walk, little things like that really allow your brain to rest and recharge. And when you're working on your own, it's really important to be efficient. And I find that breaks really help you be efficient. Next, and I think this is tough because it sort of requires people to get real with yourself a little bit, but I'll start by sharing my own sticking points. And you really have to identify what your weaknesses are. And for me, that's finding the motivation to get through large chunks of work that can be a little bit repetitive. Whether that's answering 400 submission emails I've let pile up over a day or two, or going to do a huge chunk of research, like if I'm building a product guide. Those sorts of hours are really tough for me because I find them a little repetitive and sometimes I end up saying the same thing or looking at the same thing multiple times. So I find in order to get through the, the points that are my weaknesses, I need to reward myself with something. And I know that sounds a little silly and maybe even a little simple to actually reward yourself for doing something you don't like or that might be boring, but I find it's really actually all I need to get through that task. For me, that mean, might mean I get to watch a movie while I do something, or maybe once I finish, I get to go get ice cream down the street. It's so simple, but those little rewards actually help me get through the chunks of the day that I hate. Now, that reward will be different for everybody listening right now, but figure out little things that you can give yourself that don't cost a lot of money, but do give you some sort of comfort and enjoyment, and reward yourself for getting through tough chunks of work with that. And the second is something I think we all understand, that feeling when you wake up in the morning and you just don't want to work on a certain project, or you just don't want to start work in the morning. I've found that over the last six years of pretty much working by myself that don't fight that feeling. That feeling almost always wins, and it's like slamming your head into a wall over and over again. If there's something else productive you can be doing, go do that instead. If there's a project that you just don't want to tackle right in the morning, Go stuff envelopes and do something else. Go do billing, deal with your paperwork. Something else that you can do a little bit mindlessly to sort of help you be productive, but ease your brain into working on those projects. Because a lot of times, if you just run up against that wall of not wanting to do something, the quality of work you're going to produce when you actually do work is not very good. So it's really better to wait until your brain is warmed up and actually ready to tackle that project to move forward with it. And the last one is something that I feel really strongly about, which is hinging due dates on other people's work to ensure delivery and quality. And I'll share a little bit of a personal story with this one. This is something I'm struggling with right now. I've always hinged my due dates for either posts or content on the site or larger projects on my other editors. And I don't want to let those people down. So if they're waiting for me to turn something in or to give them feedback on something, it's going to make sure that I get it done on time and that I do it as well as I can because I don't want to let them down. Now this is tough to stick to, and I've recently had a problem where I owe my editor something and I have a really tough week and they're all waiting on me and the next thing you know, we're all behind because I haven't been able to stay on time with things. And it can be a little embarrassing, but it's also another reminder that maybe something isn't working as efficiently as possible and maybe I need to go back and delegate more so that I'm better able to stay on task and stay on time with the things that I owe people. So when you hand your due dates on other people, it's really gonna help you improve the quality of your work get it done on time, or it's going to help you figure out maybe where you need to delegate some more. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you guys soon for the final video.